I'm more interested in what the clothes are saying to the outside world than whether or not I actually like it. Of course, I will be helpful in, in determining the fit, you know, if it's too big, too small, too tight. But it's more important to me that when the client puts on an outfit, that their eyes light up, that they suddenly are standing straighter, that they're feeling more confident. You could just see it in their body language. And even if it's something hideous, to, in my opinion, as long as they love it, you know, that's most important. And I support that. Welcome to Spark Joy, the podcast dedicated to celebrating the Kamari method and the transformative power of surrounding yourself with joy and letting go of all the rest. With your hosts and certified Kamari consultants, Kristen Ivey and Karen Sochi. And now, here's the show. Anya Schwitzman is a licensed clinical and school psychologist working for nearly two decades with children and adults. She founded The Fashionologist to help women align themselves with who they are at this very moment. She combines her expert skill as a therapist, her passion for clothing, and solid research to back up her understanding of the value of clothes in order to provide a personalized, simple, and strategic experience with each client. Welcome, Anya. Hi. Well, hello. Welcome to Spark Joy, Anya. We are so excited to have you here so we can chat a little bit about fashion. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, this is going to be fun. But before we dive in, I definitely want to ask you about your background because you have a very interesting path to the profession that you are passionate about now. You worked as a psychologist and you are now a stylist. So I want to hear about that road and how you got to where you are today. I'm a clinical psychologist and been practicing for 20 years, working with children, adolescents, young adults in private practice and in schools. And all along, I've always loved clothing. And I've always known that clothing have power to communicate one's mindset. Uh, a few years ago, a friend who was recently separated from her husband asked me to go shopping for a dress for her daughter's graduation. And she was devastated about the end of her marriage. She could barely leave the house, let alone buy a dress. So that time that I spent with her shopping for that dress, going through different styles of dresses, helping her make the decision to find what made her feel most powerful, confident, and in control was actually an incredibly remarkable experience for me. I was able to support this friend using my passion for clothing, as well as my expertise as a psychologist, but I did it in real time and in the real world. And I realized then that many more people could use my support in this way. And I started my business. That is so interesting. I'm really interested in this idea of how psychology and fashion come into play together because I can so clearly think about how shopping and psychology come in play together, but I'm so interested to learn more about this idea, this intersection between fashion and psychology. How do you see that playing itself out, certainly in the work that you're doing with clients? So the study of enclosed cognition is a field in psychology which understands that clothes have a systematic influence on the wearer's psychological processes and abilities. And it's really not so much about fashion. It's really about the clothes that you wear. The clothes themselves send signals that mean something about the wearer and who they are in connection to the community around them. So when I started this business, I knew intuitively that clothes really matter. But what I found were so many studies that actually prove that it matters. There's a very famous study in, that was done in 2012. It was published in the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology. And it demonstrated that when subjects were told to wear a white coat that belonged to a doctor, as compared to the same white coat that belonged to a painter, these subjects actually performed better on tests of cognitive abilities, including attention. And I came to find other studies that demonstrated that if you show subjects people's shoes, subjects could actually guess the age of the wear, the income, the agreeableness, just from the person's shoes, what they look like, the style. There's also plenty of research that shows that formal clothing as compared to relaxed clothing can actually improve our ability to negotiate with others. So I help to showcase a client's sense of who they are now and how they want to be perceived to others one garment at a time based on the research that I found. Wow, that is fascinating. I had no idea that there were so many studies out there to connect the fact that clothing, what we wear, really does matter and impact our emotions and the way we are perceived in the world. 
I think intuitively, I put two and two together that what I wear and how I show up is very important. And then working with clients, we often have this discussion as well around really starting with clothing in terms of understanding what sparks joy, using that as a tool to actualize a vision. I'd love to hear more about your process because I've actually never worked with a clothing stylist of any kind. And so I'd love to hear what that process is like and how you help your clients. Well, sure. So in my work as the fashionologist, I function as a coach, like a wardrobe strategist is what I call myself. If an individual is seeking a therapist to address mental health conditions, I refer them for psychotherapy because as the fashionologist, I am your coach and we're going to find a way to, to get over your life challenge. And I start with what I call the Schwartzman Client Information Inventory, which is just a set of questions I've developed so that I could better understand the client before we actually meet. After that, I set a date and meet them at their closet. And while I'm in their closet, I am receiving so much information about who they are, their likes and dislikes, the challenges they've come across, the burdens that they carry. It's just so much information. And in the time that I spend in their closet, I'm editing out what needs to be tossed or donated. I'm assessing what key pieces are missing from their closet. And I offer ideas for different outfits to be made from what they already have. In that time, I'm also talking with the client and getting a sense of what's going on and how they can perhaps make change in their life. So all of that's happening while I'm in that person's closet. After I leave, I send the client my action plan, which is a detailed account of what outfits we put together, what pieces are missing, and then resources to find what they need. I'm just having all these thoughts about how I see this also myself in working with clients. You know, you and I come from similar backgrounds and I I know that for me, being able to be in someone's home has made such a difference as far as being able to understand so much more about them and in such a short amount of time. I mean, I felt before when I was acting as a therapist that I could know somebody for a year and really not know as much about them as, you know, a few minutes in their closet, which is so interesting to me. What have been some of the outcomes that you've noticed in working with your clients on this type of a, you know, much more psychological kind of frame of reference? Well, I've been told that the best feeling that most of my clients get are from the compliments they've received over their new outfits. These are outfits that they've made with clothing they've already had in their closet, or maybe we've redesigned it with different accessories that they've purchased. Typically, it's outfits that they never would have picked for themselves, but they took my advice and took that risk and ended up loving how they felt in it. So the outcome has generally been very positive. I think people are often surprised by how much they get out of the experience. I think most go in not understanding exactly what to expect. And when they leave, they're all coming back and telling me that, you know, the risk they took was so worthwhile. They're getting so many compliments. They're feeling really good about themselves. It's so interesting that you talk about this. It's almost as though getting an affirmation by getting the compliment helps cement that self-confidence in the decision-making process. I just am thinking about like, uh, you know, if you mention to somebody, oh, that's a great handbag or love your shoes or something like that, how it just changes their entire being. I mean, it, it feels so gratifying to just have someone, you know, even if it's a small superficial thing like that, just acknowledge that you, you know, you made a good choice. You know, it's, it's really a very self-affirming kind of thing. I agree. I strongly believe that you can wear something that says you've got this, even if you're not feeling it in the moment. I think that what happens is, is that you receive compliments, they start altering how you believe you are in control or not in control. It starts to make you feel better about yourself. It starts to change your mood. And then lo and behold, you have this new mindset that can actually work towards achieving whatever it is you want to achieve. I think all that from a handbag is actually possible. Yeah, it's fascinating how we both use the vehicle of either clutter or clothing specifically to really explore different layers of how to really live our best life when it comes to making good decisions and aligning our clothing with our values and aligning our home's design with how we want to live. I know that that's something that comes up very often when considering what should we keep, what should we move forward with in terms of our style is clothing that is either purchased spur of the moment or 
purchased kind of as a way to cope perhaps with something that's going on emotionally or clothing that may represent a season of our life where we're a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Have you run into the situation and how do you suggest we make the best decision in those scenarios? Well, I think that in every moment of your life, you're trying to portray a part of yourself that feels best. And so I think that what you're saying is that at a certain time in development, if you're looking at yourself and it's different than what you saw a few years ago, that's okay. Let's dress you to present your best self in the moment. It's so interesting. I I think that for all of us, coming to this work from different perspectives, we really see our clients go through just a huge range of emotions. There's a lot of times they come to us feeling overwhelmed or sad or frustrated. And then hopefully the process creates some sense of relief or a sense of mastery and and hopefully even joy, Mm -hmm. you know, when dealing with the things that are in their lives, you know, the things as opposed to the emotions or getting in touch with the emotions behind the things, I guess I should say. And I'm sure that this is really true in the work that you do with clients as well. How have your clients responded to really taking this cold, hard look at the decisions that they've made and where they're at in at whatever stage in life they've approached you? I mean, I'm guessing a lot of times people come to this thinking, okay, I'm just going to get some really great fashion advice and have some great new outfits. But it sounds like there's really a lot more behind this process for you. I agree. There is so much more behind the process for me. And I think that as in therapy work that I do, I think the client comes to me a bit anxious about what to expect. They're not really sure what the process might be like. I think that inviting someone into their home brings up anxiety, especially their closets. You know, a lot of people who seem so put together and so you know, well-coordinated and organized on the outside, a lot of times in their own private closet, it's a very different story. So it takes a lot of courage to invite someone like me into their closet. And I take that very seriously. I think that clients are often ready by the time I get there as compared to someone who's sort of forced into this kind of experience. So though they're anxious, they're willing and ready to take the leap to see what happens. And The process that I use is very slow and meticulous in that I understand, I go in completely aware that they are vulnerable, they are anxious, and my job is in part to to make them feel more comfortable. And I do that with the clothes and then with the conversation. And then as the mood shifts and they become feeling more safe with me, I think that's when we get to a lot of the work that they need help with. I guess I'm I'm wondering a lot about, because I'm thinking of these examples as you're talking, working with people who are going through a transition. I worked with someone who was retiring and her closet was full of the most amazing clothes ever. Really beautiful, beautiful, very expensive couture things. And I worked with her a dozen times and every single time I worked with her, she was wearing the same two or three Grateful Dead t-shirts because her (laughs) life was just so different. And the closet had no relationship to the person she was, but it was really hard for her to to begin to let go of those things. And it was a really slow and gradual process. What have been some of the things that you've seen in your clients as they've gone through transitions? and, And how do you specifically help someone kind of come to terms with who they are now as opposed to who they were in the past or who they think they are who they, you know, thought at one time they'd like to be. I think that is sometimes the hardest part of the process is taking a really good look at what they have in their closet and what it means to them. So just about every client I work with has some item or items of clothing that are so meaningful for them that they have no interest in wearing anytime soon but they refuse to get rid of because, you know, it's their favorite t-shirt from when they were in high school or the dress they wore the first time they met their partner or the shoes that they remember walking through on their first date or something to that effect. And it's incredibly meaningful for them and they don't want to part with it, but it's taking up space in their closet that could be holding something more useful for them. So what I do is my job is not necessarily to toss out 
items that they don't need. My job is just to shift thinking. So I always say you want to keep the dress or the shoes or whatever it is, that's fine, but let's put it somewhere else so that the first and foremost thing that you look and see in your closet are things that are going to fit, things that you can wear, things that are going to elevate your mood, your style, um, things that make you feel powerful and control. And I do a lot of that in the process as well. I'm literally shifting around pieces in the closet so that when they open the doors, what they see is everything that they can wear in the moment that's going to communicate their sense of self now, you know, and still feel confident and good about what they have. The question, does it spark joy, is a simple one, but not so easy to execute alone. Extend your tidying experience by joining the Spark Joy Club, our online community filled with our clients, fellow listeners, and Kamari enthusiasts ready to support your journey. If you find yourself buried under clothing, stuck on storage, or pointing fingers at untidy housemates or family members, we want to help you finish your tidying journey once and for all. Support the show at the Joy Riser level and receive access to our exclusive virtual community, as well as the Tidy Home Joy Journal, your number one tidying companion. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click on Join the Club to get started. And now back to the show. You know, I am thinking about myself now and how, you know, at different times of the day, like I can wake up and I can say, okay, this is what I'm going to wear today. This feels good. And then an hour or two later, it's like, oh, this was a mistake. This is not what I wanted to wear today. And I think for the work that I do, a lot of times it's really easy for me to get into this. Well, you know, I have kind of a basic uniform that will serve me well, whether I'm, you know, in a closet or under the bed or in the basement or whatever spot I might be in that's unexpected, but it isn't necessarily what I think enhances the perception that I want to present. So I want to come across because of the work that I do as somebody who's really together and stylish and organized, but I also know that in the course of working with a client, I could need to be really comfortable. So it's really hard to kind of, to really find that balance between the practical things and the things that are really necessary for my own sense of feeling good about myself. And I'm assuming that there's a shopping aspect that you employ that would help someone kind of bridge that gap. Yes, absolutely. So part of the process is going into the closet. That's step one. And then step two is the shopping process that I would meet with a client outside in a store boutique where items are actually hung up in the closet that I've picked for them and they're ready to be tried on. And typically I find the pieces that were missing from their closet or pieces that might elevate their style a bit. If it's just work uniform, I will just find pieces that they can work and feel comfortable in and feel good about themselves in for work. And that also is an incredible process because the dressing room itself behaves in a lot of ways like the therapy room where talking about such vulnerable things about the person's life and you know their their challenges their goals so much is happening while they're trying on the clothes and they're feeling more comfortable talking to me because we're in a sort of non therapeutic room it feels different and i've found that people are a lot more willing to share what they feel as compared to a you know therapy room or office which takes a lot longer to get to what's going on for them Wow. Yeah. It's like the store becomes your therapy couch, uh, I guess. It does. Wow. It does. But it's so different because it doesn't feel as scary to them. You know, they're, they're trying on clothes. They're feeling comfortable. They're talking. People are about, you know, walking and it just feels different, I think, for them. And they're more willing to open up. But in terms of, you know, putting on work uniform, I agree, Karen. I think it's really important that you find items that really don't just, you know, look good, but that they feel good. And I often help people find just a few pieces that they would be comfortable working in, but also would make them feel confident and empowered and in control. Yeah. And I would imagine this really fitting so well when you're at a point where the idea of sparking joy has led you to have a certain number or a certain type of things in the closet. But 
there's still an underwhelming feeling, right? Like maybe I need to explore this a little bit further. Why am I still not feeling excited about what's left? I guess we could say. Right. So when would it be time to call in a stylist? How do you know that you might be ready to move into that phase of elevating your wardrobe? Well, I think that there are key times in a person's life that they know when something's changed, whether it's because someone recently divorced or separated, if there's a change in the household, maybe a child has gone off to college, maybe you've just had your last child, maybe you've had your first child. I mean, these are outside events that can really mark, you know, when is a good time to start changing up the closet. But other times it's more internal. It's more about just feelings that you have. Perhaps somebody is feeling just not excited about their life. They're feeling unfulfilled. They're feeling like bored or stuck is a word I hear a lot. So if they're starting to feel stuck and it's impacting how they feel about themselves from a day-to-day basis, you know, are they showing up to events and just feeling really down about how they appear? Or are they standing in front of their closet for hours trying to figure out how to manage what they do have? I think that's a really good time to stop and say, look, I need some help. I need someone to help support me through this and get me over the hump. And I think it's a great time to call in someone like me who can support that person. What I really like about your approach is that for me, I feel really uncomfortable giving my opinion about how something looks on someone because I feel like that is just so, number one, not my role. And number two, I don't feel like I know what I'm talking about because I'm not a fashion person, right? So I really feel uncomfortable doing that. But I do feel a lot of times my clients are looking for someone who can tell them, this is what you want to project. This is what I'm seeing in your closet right now. And here is how we could kind of get you a little closer to who you want to be as opposed to, you know, the decisions that you've made in the past. Right. I think that a great big difference between myself and a classic personal stylist is that I don't put upon my style on anyone. I work with what works best for you. So I'm more interested in what the clothes are saying to the outside world than whether or not I actually like it. Of course, I will be helpful in, in determining the fit, you know, if it's too big, too small, too tight. But it's more important to me that when the client puts on an outfit that their eyes light up, that they suddenly are standing straighter, that they're feeling more confident. You could just see it in their body language. And even if it's something hideous, in my opinion, as long as they love it, you know, that's most important. And I support that. You know, there are times with some clients that will choose to wear outfits that are completely not in my taste. And I might say to them, you know, I see you love it. It's wonderful. But let me tell you what this outfit is saying to me. And if it's something that they had not expected or, you know, intended, then they choose whether or not to, you know, continue wearing that outfit. But if they're taking in that information and saying, huh, it hadn't occurred to me that that's how I would look in this, then they may or may choose to stay with it or not. But again, it's not my job to instill style. I do know what looks good. I know what's trendy and fashionable. And I also, you know, appreciate quality and I'll impart some of that knowledge on clients. But again, it's more important to me that they feel good in whatever it is that they're wearing. Fantastic. And speaking of feeling good, we'd love to have you share your favorite closet styling tip. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, I think that it's important to organize a closet by seasons only have current seasonal clothes that fit you, that you will wear, that's up in front of the closet so that it's easily accessible. And I think that that makes getting dressed more efficient and then inevitably enjoyable. And if getting dressed is enjoyable, you're going to have fun with the clothes. I also think that clothes should be kept on sturdy hangers. This is a pet peeve of mine. I hate wire hangers. And I think that keeping clothes on sturdy hangers, whatever those look like, not only helps to keep the clothes in a better shape, but I also think it sends a subtle message that the clothes are valuable and need to be treated with respect. And I think that's important. Well, 
there's definitely two things we love to talk about on the show, and that is hangers and respect. Uh, I was just going to say, I love it. <laughs> You're definitely in agreement with that tip there. And oh, that's everyone, funny. elevate your hangers out there. <laughs> they matter. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And of course, we can't leave you without asking, what's sparking the most joy for you at this moment in your life, Anya? Well, I think it's it's really my kids. I have a nine-year-old and an 11-year-old and school is either over or almost over for them. And just being able to spend more time with them that's productive and enjoyable as compared to the craziness that we had all year, running after them, getting their homework done and all the places they needed to go. So I really appreciate and I'm so grateful for this um, winding down time and the time I get to spend with them. Oh, that's great. And... Finally, do you have any parting words of wisdom for our listeners? Coco Chanel, she once said that dress shabbily and they remember the dress, but dress impeccably and they remember the woman. And that always stuck with me. And I think it's really important to remember. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you, Anya, for joining us today. It was so great to talk with you. It was my pleasure. Thank you both. And you can find Anya at thefashionologist.com and she's on Instagram at thefashionologistNYC and Anya has a special offer exclusively for SparkJoy listeners. Mention that you heard her here and you'll get 20% off your first Mindful Closet edit. So now we want to hear from you. Tell us your burning tidying questions or share stories about how Kanmari has impacted your life. Head over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe and review the show, which helps us reach others along their tidying journeys. To extend your tidying experience, you can join the Spark Joy Club. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click join the club to become a member of the Spark Joy community, or you can join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope your day sparks joy. Thank you for listening to Spark Joy with your host, Kristen Ivey of For the Love of Tidy in Chicago and Karen Sochi of The Serene Home in New York City. Spark Joy, the podcast, is not endorsed by or affiliated with Kamari Media Inc. The opinions expressed on this episode represent the views of the co hosts and guests alone and do not represent the corporate position of Kamari Media Inc. or the Kamari Consultant Community.